Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to be looking at something that is not a Mac, but don't worry, it was still made by Apple. So, this is something really cool, and Elite Obsolete Electronics is to thank. They reached out to me on Twitter, and we worked out a deal, and I was able to get something really cool. And if you saw the thumbnail, and you saw the video description, you probably already know what this is. This is an original iPhone. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this. So a big thanks goes out to Elite Obsolete Electronics on Twitter. Go check them out. Elite Obsolete is their handle. They do excellent stuff. They do iPods and much more. So go check them out. So I got this box today and thankfully it was better packaged than, well, the box, because it got a bit crushed in the mail, but they packaged this pretty well. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna open it up. I left it charging for a bit, but this is gonna be like my first impression of using one of these things for ages. So let's take a look at it. All right, so we got whatever stuck there. That's where we're all right here. We're just gonna take out the things. All right, so put that box to the side. We got some neat little stickers here. Elite Obsolete Electronics. That's pretty cool. That's a nice sticker. And then we have some smaller stickers here. Very cool, thank you very much. So again, check them out on Twitter. And we're gonna put these somewhere where they will not get all bent out of shape and banged up. So we have the iPhone in here. Let's take it out. My goodness, it has been quite a long time since I've seen one of these original iPhones. I'll get some close-ups here in a little bit, but my goodness, it is, it is a little bit reflective here. We'll wipe it on our shirt there to, there we go, that's a bit better. Um, it is so small. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is tiny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring out my, uh, my iPhone 8 here and uh, we're gonna take the case off just to, to play fairsies here. So this is my iPhone 8. Uh, this is the, the phone I currently use. I'm, I'm waiting to get a new phone. That'll come in a few days. Uh, but I've had this since 2017. And uh, yeah, so let's just do a size comparison here. Get my fingers out of the way. Look at that. There's quite a difference there. And the thickness is yeah, I'll get some close-ups, but this is just first impressions. Um, so, yeah, wow. So I had one of these when they first came out. I got mine on July 2nd, 2007. I got the four gigabyte model, and it was only available for AT&T customers in the United States at the time. And so I remember going to get the phone. I'll show some photos here. I actually found some photos that I took on my digital camera while I was waiting in the line to get the phone. It was at this little, little tiny AT&T store uh, in Pennsylvania somewhere. And I got the phone and I was super excited. And it was my first phone with a built-in camera. So before I got the iPhone, I had an N-Gage QD. And it's not the N-Gage that you had to hold like a taco to talk to it. This was a little bit better. I liked it because I could play games on it. I could use a web browser on it. It was really cool. Basically I had everything I wanted except for a camera. And I was quite jealous of my friends in high school and my, you know, my family who had phones that had cameras on them because I thought, oh, that's cool. I wanted to be able to take pictures and stuff. And yeah, my, my phone didn't do cameras. So I got the iPhone that was my first experience with a cell phone with a camera. And I was a bit of a shutter bug already. And this just blew it into overdrive. I was just taking pictures left and right. Uh, the camera is fixed focus. So, you know, you cannot do macros or anything like that. Uh, you basically had to, you know, make sure that your subject was in focus before you took the photo and the shutter had a bit of a lag to it. I mean, this was early days, but my goodness, look at that. Still turns on. So um, there was a few of these phones uh, to choose from. Um, Elite Obsolete uh, Electronics had uh, a number of them and uh, I asked for one uh, that was in pretty good shape. So um, these are all, you know, e-waste recycled things. So you're not gonna get one that's in perfect condition, but my goodness, this is beautiful. The back does not have any major dents or scuffs or scratches at all. Um, the only defect that is really noticeable is at the top of the screen, there's a few rows of dead pixels, but honestly, all you're really gonna see there is the, the cellular service gauge, the Wi-Fi gauge, and the battery meter and the time. So it doesn't really bother me. The rest of the display is flawless. And I mean, it works. Just look at that. Oh man, that takes me back. So. Yeah, I got this uh, phone originally, the uh, 2007 iPhone, the original iPhone. Uh, when I first got that, that was like a game changer for me. I was previously carrying around an N-Gage QD as my cell phone, and I was carrying around this Palm Pilot as my organizer. And this is a Tungsten T Palm Pilot. Uh, so there you go, this is what that did. And uh, I, love, I love that 
because uh, that's where you would write, uh, you know, the little characters. And this, you know, was a touch screen too. But the idea is you'd use the stylus to write. I have to do videos on these Palm Pilots. But um, yeah, this was my Palm Pilot. I loved this thing. I still love this thing. It's pretty cool. I had this little case for it where you, you pop it in there. You had your, your SD cards here. I always, I never understood this. Why on the case, the SD cards had to go in like this with the contacts facing away, uh, facing you rather. So the label is facing away. So how the heck do you know what's on the card? Well, you have to take it, look at it. Okay, this is Pocket Express Entertainment. That's not the one I want. Let me put that back. Let me pull this one out. Okay, Palm Pack Games card. That's the one. Yeah, that's just the stupidest design of the case. All you had to do was move the notch the other way and you could, you know, easily see what was on the cards. But anyway, uh, this was my organizer. And then I had the N-Gage phone and then I had a iPod fifth generation. Uh, that's the iPod video, the first home of video. And that was what I used to carry around. Plus my Canon PowerShot A620. So that was a lot of stuff to keep in my pockets. Even if I was wearing like cargo shorts with a lot of pockets, that was a phone, a Palm Pilot, an iPod and a camera. And that camera was pretty bulky. It took four AA batteries. So the iPhone really changed my digital life because I was able to take so much with me in such a small package. So I'm gonna get a bit of a close-up setup here and we're gonna take a look at the iPhone. So hopefully this works out. It's not too blurry, it's not too glary, but this is just an off-the-cuff type thing. So we're gonna turn this thing on. There we go. So for those of you who have never seen one of these in person, the whole back is metal, which is really cool. You have a plastic area here and that's for the antennas and such. So your wireless is uninterrupted. You have a tiny little camera here and you have your ring silent switch there. You have volume up and down. And then this is up here. You have the sleep wake button, so that'll turn the device on and off. You have the SIM tray here, and then you have a recessed headphone jack. Now that was something that was really annoying. And I have no idea why they did this, maybe because they wanted you to buy their own headphones, but it actually came with headphones in the box. So well, maybe that wasn't it. But essentially you could only use Apple's headset. So if you could see here, the jack is sort of recessed. You cannot put in a regular pair of headphones there because it's just too fat to fit in. I actually bought an adapter ages ago when this was my primary phone to be able to use separate headphones and that was a popular accessory. But yeah, it was just one of those things where I don't know why they did it, but they did it. So here's the device itself once it's turned on. You have this slide to unlock gesture, which is a signature iPhone thing. And there we go. Um, this does not have any cellular connectivity, obviously. I'm going to, <laughs> I was trying to swipe up and do the airplane mode thing to end its suffering. But yeah, there's no control center here. So I'm gonna go to airplane mode, I'm gonna turn that on, and then we could uh, turn Wi-Fi on manually if we wanted. Uh, I don't think this is gonna connect to anything I have here. Let's just give it a try. And we're gonna see if that wants to connect. No, yeah, it doesn't like my Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna have to change that if uh, we're gonna want to do any serious demoing here. But yeah, so here's the apps that came on the device. Now this is running a later version of the iOS, uh, the iPhone OS as it was called at the time. And I believe this is like version three or something like that. Uh, let's go to about. And yeah, 3.1.3. So this is uh, a little bit, I think this is, might be the last version. I. I you know, my memory is failing me at this point, but um, this is actually the eight gigabyte model. And that's something I failed to mention earlier. I only could afford the four gigabyte model and I could barely afford that. I was doing a freelance job at the time and I saved all my money. And from the end of the job, that's what I did. And I got the iPhone and that was like, I was so excited. And so, yeah, that's this. This is the eight gigabyte one. This is the one I could never afford. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, this thing is just, ah, uh, this is, I'm just gonna go through some of the settings here and stuff. I mean, my goodness, this takes me back. Just looking at this thing. Did you guys ever have one of these? Anybody out there watching? You ever have the original iPhone or the 3G? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is, this is quite a trip. Uh, I will say I did have uh, my original for quite a while. And then I actually won an iPhone 3G uh, from Leo Laporte of uh, This Week in Tech. He was doing a podcast uh, contest at the time. And uh, I called in and I won. I won a gift certificate for an iPhone 3G. And so I gave my original iPhone to my brother and uh, he had it for a while and then it was stolen from him. So my original iPhone has uh, gone on to uh, other places, unfortunately. And so for the longest time I did not have an original iPhone and now I have it again. So I'm very, very, very excited. Again, big thanks to Elite Obsolete Electronics. Very, very cool to have this in my possession again. 
Uh, so we do have some settings here. Let's just poke around here. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm sure people have done that before. But messages, what options we have here. <laughs> Show preview and repeat alert. That's all we got. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, something that I remember. Uh, messaging was quite limited. You couldn't do messages with images. You could see, just see there's text here. There's no option to add photos or anything like that. And uh, that was a limitation. People forget that. When the iPhone came out, there were a lot of limitations. You could only send text messages. That's all. Just plain old SMS messages. Not multimedia SMS, just plain old SMS. And the way around that, there was a little clever way around that. Most phones uh, and phone carriers, at least here in the U.S., you could actually email some attachments. So I remember taking a photo and emailing it to a friend of mine. And that was the only way to actually send a message. So you could email, I think it was like the phone number at vzw or att.mobile or whatever the thing was, and you were able to actually send a message with the photo, and it would show up as a text message on their device. Now, it never really worked for me 100%. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. But yeah, that's just, wow, that takes me back. I forgot that was a thing. Uh, we do have the App Store on here, so this is a later version of the software. Obviously, the iPhone did not ship with an App Store. The whole idea was web apps. We're going to use web apps and you're going to like it. And yeah, that, you know, didn't last too long. Uh, we do have photos here. Now let's take a, let's take a picture. We don't have any photos in there. So let's take a picture. We have a, an old iPod dock here. Uh, yes, you could use my location. You could try. And we're going to, we're going to take a photo. And let's see how, I guess I'll, I'll do it this way. This is going to be weird for you to see it on the camera and everything, but yeah, we're going to try. Yeah, look at that shutter lag, baby. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, that's that's the photo there. And you might be saying that's horribly blurry and it's not in focus. And that is absolutely correct. Uh, this thing was fixed focus. So yeah, and I apologize for the lights and everything. This is just, you know, we're planning on going too in depth here. Uh, this is a this is a joy to have again. Uh, we have iPod here. If I had music on here, uh, there would be cover flow and some cool stuff on here. So. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause here. I'm going to try and set up the Wi-Fi real quick and uh, see if we could do that. And then we'll be able to play around with this just for a few more moments. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be pretty limited because everything I tap on is not going to do anything anymore. And yeah, I think YouTube has since changed the connection and all this stuff. So a lot of this stuff won't work. But at least we want to get online with Safari or something like that. So uh, let's pause here and we'll try that out. All right. So we're going to try and use my personal hotspot from my iPhone here. Hey, it likes it. All right, cool. So we can actually connect to the internet using the hotspot of my iPhone 8. Pretty neat. All right, so now that we're online, let's see what we could still do with this thing. <laughs> Who knows? Let's see. We go to Safari here. And my goodness, all right, so <laughs> let's try and load up apple.com. Oh, it's going to try. If this bursts into flames, I would not be surprised. It's not doing too bad, actually. It's taking a while to load. Has no idea what all this modern CSS business is, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of images aren't loaded yet. But it's trying. We'll give it a moment and see. We don't want it to suffer for too long now, do we? Let's see if we can prop this up a little bit. So, Yeah, the glare on this is not ideal with the camera situation I have set up, but we'll manage. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. it. It sort of gave up there. It was like, nope, I'm good. All right, let's go to another bookmark here. Well, that's the that's the same thing. We're not gonna we're not gonna stress that out. Let's go to like Wikipedia. Oh, oh yeah, security settings. Oh well, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, it just does not want to load that website, but we could try a much easier site. Go to Mac84.net, the coolest site for your old Mac, and hopefully an old iPhone. There we go. <laughs> it's a bit tiny. <laughs> we'll just zoom in. There we go. That's 
that's not too bad. Uh, we're going to click the retro site just for funsies, and then we'll click on the modern site. The retro site should load fine. Yeah, there we go. So plenty of goodies there. Pretty quick on an old site like that, you know, a simple site. Yeah, <laughs> that's not want to be secure here. All right, well, let's, uh, we could go to uh, a few other pages that are friendly to old devices, like Frog Find made by my good friend Sean of Action Retro, who was kind enough to put my beautiful fat frog animation right on the homepage to greet every single user. I mean, look how happy that frog is. He's not surly at all that he has to look for all the things that you type in. No siree. No siree. He is a happy, happy frog. All right, so uh, let's search for something fun here. Let's just do uh, iPhone. And notice how the keyboard... Maybe, maybe I'm just misremembering things, but the keyboard is in all caps. Uh, yeah, on the newer phone, uh, the keyboard switches from uppercase to lowercase as you type, so that sort of threw me off. Just search for iPhone here. And we have the iPhone Wikipedia page. And now that'll load it because it's bypassing all that security stuff. And there we go. So here's the first one. June 29, 2007, and that's exactly what we're browsing this on. Pretty darn cool. Now, what's interesting is the iPhone, at least here in the United States on AT&T, had unlimited data. At least uh, that was one of the plans. That was a plan that I had. Uh, you had unlimited data on the iPhones. That was email, web, etc. And yeah, it was really cool because that's what I was used to. And for the longest time, I had unlimited data and... Then AT&T switched things up a bit and you had to pay if you went over a certain amount. It used to be like if you went over uh, a few gigabytes or something, they would slow it down. But this was different. They changed it, but they changed it so they would not just slow you down, but they would like charge you an extra fee or something like that. And so it was really annoying, uh, but you know, that's just the way things had changed. Uh, for the longest time, I paid a little bit extra to be grandfathered into the unlimited data plan and that just didn't make sense anymore, and, and I just switched to a normal plan because they were just trying to get people off of that plan, and they were charging you an arm and a leg. Uh, they wouldn't let you do tethering or anything like that, so the plan that I was on had changed then. But on my Nokia N-Gage phone, I had a more restrictive data limit. You want to guess how large it was? One megabyte. Yeah, that's right. One megabyte. And I never went over it either. No sorry. I did not. I mean, loading web pages and stuff on there was... Uh, an effort in frustration. I mean, my goodness, that took a while to just like load a simple web page, load an image. I remember um, the third Star Wars movie, uh, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith was coming out, and I would look on like the Star Wars fan sites or whatever on the Engage, and yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> that was not a fun experience. Things were just so slow to load, and it was just painful. I mean, you get a little image, everything would be like mobile friendly or whatever. I remember going on like the Mac Rumors forums, check messages and stuff like that on the phone. I mean, that had such a small screen. You had to scroll. It wouldn't render things properly. You had to refresh. But I still never went over my data limit. So, I mean, that just goes to show you how times have changed. All right, so let's unlock this again. And we do have an app store. Let's see if it'll actually connect. Probably not. I'm going to assume all that security stuff is going to make this pretty useless. But we're going to try. Just makes you appreciate the newer iPhones with how large the screen is, how thin the product is. I mean, look, I'm all for, you know, things to have a larger battery and all this stuff and more usefulness rather than design. But, I mean, when you hold a phone that's this thick, it does make you appreciate the ones that are a little bit thinner. Because I always have a case on my device. That's how I am able to use the product for longer and get my money out of it, you know. Um, a device like this, uh, especially at the time, I believe this was... Uh, I paid $500, I think, for my original iPhone. It was the 4 gigabyte one. This, I believe, was $200 more than that or $100 more than that. Uh, oh, my goodness. We actually have apps here. <laughs> HBO Max. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're, we're just going to download that and Pokemon Go on this. And some Minecraft while we're at it. <laughs> Let's see what happens if we tap on this. I'm amazed it actually connected. My goodness. I am amazed. 
Yeah, we're not even logged into an iTunes account here, so it's not going to let us uh, get anything, uh, and it won't let us install. Uh, just look at that, though. Look at the icon. So what Apple used to do is you would upload uh, a regular icon to the App Store or whatever, and it would automatically... <laughs> <laughs> it would automatically put the little gradient there that you saw on the icon, sort of like the reflective nature and stuff like that. Uh, it would put that on the icon itself, I believe. So I think we're sort of seeing that when we tap on the app. Let's see if that's correct or I'm just rambling here for nonsense. Yeah, see that reflectiveness? That is not on the actual app icon. Let's select another one here. You can see the difference. Uh, let's do an HBO Max one. We'll see the, the gradient it adds to the top of that. Yeah, see how it has that reflective nature at the top? And that was a big design thing of like, uh, you know, Web 2.0 type thing. Everybody was mimicking that. That's just funny. I, I forgot all about that until now. So, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, Genius. I forgot about Genius. It was sort of like a curated list type thing. They had it for music as well. Let's see if the iTunes store connects. So we know the App Store connects. Let's see if the iTunes store connects. This has turned into me just fussing around with this phone, so it takes a little while to load things. Just, just a little while. Oh, it crashed. <laughs> okay, maybe it doesn't want to do that. Uh, we have the phone app here. I know we don't have uh, anything uh, in here. I don't think we can make calls, but uh, yeah, we have the dialer here. We have favorites. We have recents, contacts. These are all blank. Uh, we do a visual voicemail. Uh, that was here okay we're not going to do that um but yeah there there was visual voicemail that was a huge feature on this which was really cool because before then without visual voicemail you would have to dial a number listen to the options of the automated system and then like push one to listen to voicemails and you'd have to like go through this menu and everything with visual voicemail it would come up sort of like you know, music files, and you just tap the one that you want to listen to. You could fast forward, you could rewind or whatever. And it was an interface. You didn't have to, you know, blindly dial something and listen. You know, it was a nice interface to it, a visual interface. And it was really easy to use. And I just remember using that and thinking it was like the best thing. So we do have a calculator here. Uh, does it have the scientific one if you rotate it? Yeah, there we go. So that the accelerometer works, so that's good. Uh, unlike my iPhone 3G, remember when I purchased that, brand new out of the box, accelerometer did not work. Had to bring it back to the Apple Store, and they gave me a refurb one, even though mine was brand new. Uh, we do have voice memos. That was a late edition. You are hearing me talk. There we go. Sort of like the visual voicemail interface. Let's see, do the speakers work on this thing? Oh, listen to that audio quality. That's fantastic. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, we have the iPod. If I had some music on here, uh, we'd be able to listen to some things. Uh, let's see, what else we got? We have stocks. I don't know if that's going to connect. Let's see what the Apple stock was in 2007. Error retrieving chart. Not surprised. Uh, I think the weather has been down for a few years now. Yeah, this used to be with Yahoo Weather. Uh, before they change things. So that's no longer possible. Uh, we looked at the clock already. Uh, we briefly looked at calendar. Let's take a look at notes. Yeah, we have no notes here, but uh, you could just do text notes here. Uh, so we could say hello. Keyboard's a little bit different, but yeah, if you hit done, now you have a note here. Uh, you could email that or you could trash it. Those are the two options. You couldn't scribble or anything like that. You could search for them at least, so that's nice. But uh, yeah, they were pretty limited. Uh, and this is again, the iOS version three piece of software. What's also important to remember is the original iPhone actually came with quite a few accessories in the box. And it had better of because it was quite expensive back in the day. This phone cost upwards of $500 and that was for the four gigabyte model. The eight gigabyte model we had here cost a little bit more. Now, this came with a dock. Now, it was a dock unique to the iPhone. It was not like the iPod Universal dock where you had the infrared sensor and video out and stuff like that, but it still came with a dock, which was nice. It came with a 30 pin to USB cable so you could charge and sync your iPhone, very important. And it came with a headset and a wall charger. So 
came with quite a few things in the box. I mean, these are things we sort of take for granted these days, and a lot of manufacturers, including Apple, have started removing these accessories from the box because they assume, hey, you already have them in there. Now, it's just me, but I think if I'm dropping $1,000 on a phone, maybe I would like a fast USB charger in the box. That's just my opinion, but hey, the tech company is gonna do what the tech company is gonna do. Back to the iPhone. The iPhone has a 30 pin dock connector, which we were used to for the iPods. Now this is a thicker cable on the bottom here. It's not the one that came with the iPhone, which didn't have the little buttons that you push to take the cable out. It was about, I'd say a third of the thickness of this little white piece of plastic at the bottom there. Um, so you could just pull it out. You didn't have to push the little pieces inwards to remove it. That's just a cosmetic thing though, because the original iPod cables do work on them just fine. So there you go. Um, there are grill holes on the bottom. I believe one's a speaker, uh, one's a microphone, um, something like that. I'm sure the original manual will correct me. But yeah, I mean, there it is, the original iPhone. And I have to say, yeah, it is quite striking to look at this again after all these years. I mean, I had a phone like this for so long, the original one for about a year or so, and then the 3G model up until I got the iPhone 4. And then I think I got the iPhone 5S or maybe it was the iPhone 5, whatever it was, and then I got the iPhone 6, and now I have the 8, and I just ordered uh, the iPhone 13 Pro, not the big one, but the regular sized one. Uh, so, you know, I've had a lot of iPhones over the years, and uh, I don't know, there's just something special about this one, which is why I was so intrigued to get one of these again. And I just love the design of it. I think it's beautiful. Uh, and you know, we take a lot for granted based on the design of this phone. Many phones from Apple and a lot of other manufacturers borrowed a lot from this phone. And uh, I think, you know, there is a lot to be said for its simple form factor. And uh, although the rounded edges <laughs> makes it a little bit slippery. So I'm uh, all for the newer iPhone 12 and 13 design that sort of mirror where the iPhone 4 was, uh, maybe a little bit less slippery, but I always put a case on my phones anyway. Now, although the design and the operating system of the iPhone has changed many times over the years, some things remain the same. Although I can't help but love those original iPhone sounds. So there we have it, the original iPhone. I'm finally reunited with one and I'm very, very happy. It's in beautiful shape, it works great, and I'm sure I'll be featuring this in a few of my videos to come. So what do you guys think? Did you ever own one of these original iPhones? Would you like to own one? Let me know in the comments section what your first smartphone was and what your first iPhone was. I'd love to hear it. But that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the iPhone or Macs or anything on the shelf you see behind me here, let me know and subscribe to the channel. You could also give us a like, that helps our channel grow. And if you wanna support me on Patreon, you could go to patreon.com forward slash Mac84 and you could subscribe to me for as little as a dollar a month. Pledging on Patreon helps support my archiving efforts and a lot of the other projects I do. In return, you get exclusive access to behind the scenes videos and stuff that nobody else gets to see. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you right here next time on Mac84.